What is up guys, Austin Richo here, back again with another Monday Night Review podcast going back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars on August 11th, 1997, looking at Raw and Nitro from that period. Um, so we're going with Raw number 222 and Nitro number 100. So of course we'll start off with Raw as we usually do and then move on to Nitro. Um, so to start off with Raw first, again, it's number 222, um, it took place in Biloxi, Mississippi, and so the show opens up first off with a recap of uh, SummerSlam, and then last week's Raw, so with all the um, parts with like Sean and Brett, uh, and Undertaker all going on with, you know, with the main event type thing and stuff that happened between those last two things, so SummerSlam and Raw, um, and so it replays all the clips from that and then it goes to a live shot of Shawn Michaels in the background which I don't know why he did it but just hint or in the background in the backstage area and like I said I don't know why they did this but it's him just like pacing around backstage and he's like notices the cameraman and goes towards him um yelling at him to get out of here and shoves him so that's how the show opens again kind of a weird open doesn't really make much sense um so then of course we get the opening and then it goes into the actual show and Shawn Michaels comes out for an in-ring interview with JR and of course he's talking about all the events going on in that there's a lot of controversy around him or surrounding him and you know he had a job to do at SummerSlam and he did it he was meant to be the ref and so he ref the match and does understand why people are um, so mad at him about what he did in the match and mentions that you know you're in this whole situation you're either with me or against me so definitely turning um Sean heel at this point because you know he's going against a face undertaker but then he'll be facing a heel Bret Hart and just setting him up for a heel run at this point now with his um with hitting the undertaker with a chair at SummerSlam um, he talks about how he's going to have a match with Mankind that night, um, saying, you know, that mentions that there's, you know, he has a match and that he's got to face Mankind and all this stuff. And during the whole time he's talking about it, uh, Sean is gay chant starts. And so it kind of like knocks or like uh, knocks Sean off his feet, kind of, not knocks him off feet, but like kind of like make, he realized what they're saying and stuff and he stops. And of course the crowd starts uh, cheering even louder and everything. And he walks over like, to the ring and yell or the ropes and like yells out well ask your mom and sister if i'm gay or something like that so you know just making a comment to try and like shut the crowd up or something um and so he continues on talking you know yeah saying you know that he's the outlaw in the company and that um nobody steals his spotlight cut and that causes uh, sergeant slaughter to walk out to the ring and of course he's gonna you know confront sean and lay down the law and of course the whole time like he's walking out and when he even gets in the ring sean's making jokes about his chin um you know just any joke you can about his prominent chin of sergeant slaughter and then as sergeant slaughter starts talking to him and you know, yelling at him or whatever sean doing the whole thing like he's getting spit on because when sergeant slaughter talks he spits and it's a thing that plays on later in the show or in episodes um but yeah he's in there acting like wiping his face like he's getting spit on and everything so sean doing his whole like dx antics that he's known for and sergeant slaughter's you know, saying that he's out here to make this or that he's here to make decisions for the betterment of wwf and so he's here to you know try and get sean under control because he's just hurting the whole thing and so that's why he has a match with mankind tonight and everything as kind of like a punishment and sean's like you know with everyone being that turned against me i'm gonna have to require a big uh, insurance policy to protect my back so if, with sean in the past he's had multiple insurance policies but the first being uh diesel um so that's where we got the introduction of diesel or kevin ash so that was this first insurance policy and then later on he ended up bringing in psycho sid or sid vicious what everyone call him as his second insurance policy so now um tonight we're gonna get his third insurance policy and um so as he's saying all this he ends the show by doing um a crotch chop to sergeant slayer so we're getting very early signs of dx going on here with sean so then we get into our next segment which um it first starts with the lod backstage and um hawk is has a leather strap in his hand and he's whipping um their barrel so if you remember the old uh raw like setup backstage they would always have like a fencing like a chain link fence and then they would sit like barrels 
just like large uh, metal barrels in front of it and it would they'd be like black barrels or something say raw on the side and so they had two of those stacked up and animal was holding the top one and hawk was just sitting there um slapping it the top one with um a, a leather strap and um jr or some one of the commentary people makes a comment that he's preparing for it um their co country whipping match that he's gonna have tonight so then goes commercial and comes back and so we get that match and so um the legion of doom comes out or at least hawk comes out and then henry of the godwins come out for the country whipping match and so the whole time this is during the match uh owen hart and bulldog are out on commentary so with this match as country whipping match all it is is that each guy has a leather strap attached to their hand and they just go around whipping each other and I assume the whole goal is just try to get the other person to like quit or leave or something because that plays into the finish. Um, so we get into the match and uh, Henry immediately starts attacking Hawk. Uh, like he goes to attack Hawk from behind as you know he's in the ring starting the whole thing playing to the crowd. So Henry goes running at Hawk but Hawk notices and so he turns around like you know ducks from Henry's attack and just immediately starts whipping him so he's whipping Henry all over and then at one point uh Finney so I guess Phineas and Animal are, are they either come out or they're out there I, d I didn't think they started out but they probably did obviously while the whole match is going on um Phineas runs around and attacks Animal with a slot bucket so he like hits him in the back of the head with a slot bucket and drops it and then um gets into the ring and starts attacking Animal along with Henry but then Animal then um, once he gets up from being knocked out by the bucket, he come gets up, he grabs the bucket, and then comes into the ring and starts attacking the Godwins with it, like hitting each of them, knocking uh, first Phineas out of the ring, and then hitting it and Henry, and then Henry falls out of the ring, and because Henry is out of the ring, Hawk ends up getting the win at that point. And so, like, I didn't remember them saying what the rules were for the match or anything, but it just seems weird that just getting knocked out of the uh, ring was how you win but i guess you know it's kind of like quitting or trying to get away and stuff so i guess overall that could kind of make sense uh next up is a little like backstage vignette or video type thing and it's of brian pillman's dressing room door it's just you know door says brian pillman on it and vince is you know questioning i wonder what he'll be wearing tonight and then we get a thing of sergeant slaughter walking up the door and he's you know knocking on the door holding a dress in his hand to give pillman the dress and it's very similar segment to what i mentioned last week so he's knocked on the door saying you know pillman brian pillman this is commissioner slaughter and stuff and so Pillman opens the door and he hands him the dress and you know Pillman's all mad angry about it slams the door and then we get into our next match of the night which is a light heavyweight match of Scott Pusky, Putsky if I could say the right name versus Tony Williams some guy named Tony Williams I don't know who he was um, so at the start of the match, uh, Goldust and Marlena come walking out and they walk to a commentary table. I thought they were going to sit like ringside like they did last week, but they just come out and set commentary and they say that they're here to present a new uh, 24 karat gold production. So that's supposed to be like Goldust video or film company. And um, so they go, he's like, let's go to it. And so on the Titan Tron, it goes to his thing. And it's a camera back in the backstage locker room of Brian Pillman's locker room. So it's Pillman in the back with the dress. And so it shows him like pacing back and forth, holding the dress, getting all mad. And so he starts taking his clothes off and trying to get into the dress but he's having problems so he's getting angry so he just starts like destroying the locker room and so it's just him wandering around in his underwear is all he has on so it's weird and like you know they're saying though this is an invasion of privacy and that um gold dust is it's not right for gold dust to be doing this um so that's pretty much the whole stuff going on during that because they're focusing more on that than their actual match but going back to the match um scott putsky ends up getting the win with the polish hammer which was famous for his dad ivan putsky and so he does move which is pretty much just like a double axe hand like running double axe handle i believe but he ends up getting the win off of that and then sergeant S slaughter ends up walking out and like getting mad at gold dust and marlena and it ends up like sending get telling him to get to the back and so you know commentary's playing at that slaughter is punishing them and gonna you know verbal like uh yell at them and stuff for being inappropriate doing what they did 
to Pillman. Um, then we get a, um, a little Undertaker video um, backstage, and he's um, just talking about that with Shawn Michaels' match tonight against uh, Mankind that he will be watching and, you know, taking note of Shawn. Then we get a little video of Brian Pillman's door again, but it's like a down low video and so the door opens and brian pillman walks out because he got his like um black boots i don't know what you call them like work boot type things that people wore in the 90s but it's um that and so it's his work boots and then his bare legs and then you can see the bottom of the dress at the end so obviously assuming that it's pillman walking out for his match the next up there's this some weird little like vignette like video thing of upcoming or it's like a preview or commercial type thing and it's um an interview with gold dust and he's just as Dustin Runnels at this point, but it's him talking um, about how he's had to like follow in his father's footsteps, and it shows pictures or video of him as I can't remember if he went by probably Dustin Rhodes at this point, um, but like er like the early '90s when he was in WWF with Dusty Rhodes, they like tagged for a match or two, and it's like from that, and he's you know saying how he had to follow in his father's footsteps with his dad being a big star and stuff, and this is all for a whole interview that's going to be in the WWF magazine. So it's a commercial for the magazine is what it ends up being. And from there we get into our next match, which is uh, Brian Pillman versus Flash Funk. And so obviously the match starts and the whole time the match is going on, um, their commentary is talking about how uh, Jerry Lawler is going to be in a uh, match this Sunday at the um, ECW pay-per-view, which is hardcore something. I want to say hardcore heaven, but I don't know if that's correct or not, if that's the, um, the right pay-per-view, but how he'll be in a match against Tommy Dreamer. And so that's all they really mention um, with that, just saying, you know, uh, Lawler saying how he's going to, you know, beat Tommy and, you know, show him what extreme is or something. I don't know exactly what he was really talking about, just saying that he's going to win and beat Tommy Dreamer. Then there's a little like video or box that pops up and it's Sergeant Slaughter. And he says, um, you know, that uh, he has decided that British Bulldog and Owen will be facing the Patriot and a partner of his own um, tonight, or if he can find a partner, he'll be in a match against Bulldog and Owen, you know, so he can get um, some revenge and against go against the Hart Foundation. I'm thinking going back to the match, uh, we have Flash Funk um, doing his like famous moonsault or whatever, that's like what he was really known for, um, but he goes to do it on Brian Pillman, but Pillman gets his knees up, so he, you know, blocks from getting the full impact of the moonsault and ends up hurting Flash. And then after that, Goldust and Marlena end up walking out on the ramp at the top of the ramp, and they, like, motion up to um, the Titantron, and on the Titantron appears the footage that they got from Pillman back in the locker room, and that, of course, sets Pillman off, and, you know, he's mad at Goldust and Marlena, and, like, looking up at them yelling and stuff and so from there flash is able to get a roll up um pin off of that so he gets the win and so brian Pillman still has to wear the dress um another week and so he's just super mad angry stomping around the ring and stuff being pissed off next up we get a recap video of um stone cold and owen hart's match from SummerSlam, and then their interaction last week with you know austin saying he's gonna take on owen hart tonight that he doesn't care what the doctors say he's ready to fight and so that's you know the whole just little video of keeping that fresh in people's minds. Next up, we get Do Love coming out for an interview to the ring for an interview by Vince McMahon. Um, and he's talking about, you know, because he's tag team partners with Stone Cold at this point, and um, Vince questions about Stone Cold's um, health and well being. And he mentions that Stone Cold, that he did talk to Stone Cold and that he would be back soon. And he talks about all the different uh, tag teams that they'll be facing in the Fatal Four tag, weight, um, tag team match. At Ground Zero pay-per-view in September. Um, then Shawn Michaels interrupts, interrupts on the Titantron and, um, you know, claiming that dude is delusional and that he's not going to be able to win this match and stuff. Um, and so that ends the whole, like, segment, really. And so dude's music starts playing and these two girls... Um, from the crowd end up coming up into the ring and dancing with do love to end the segment off then we get a patriot um, talking backstage uh, to some a mystery birds like you can't see you can only see like the top of their head which from the their hair that you could see i could tell who it was um but he's you know talking to him saying you know like you're you are willing to be my partner and stuff like that so it's you know it's, Pretty much showing that he found a tag team partner. So then we get into hour two. So the start of the war zone. And we get the um, tag team match of British Bulldog and Owen Hart versus the Patriot and his partner. Which turned out to be Ken Shamrock. Um, so when the 
Bulldog and Owen come out. Owen grabs a mic and says that he's going to be dedicating this match to his loving big brother backstage, Bret Hart. And then as the match starts, of course, there's a lot of USA chants as there would be at this point in time. And as the match uh, continues on. And so then Brett comes out to the bot, um, out onto the ramp. He's just standing at the top of the ramp. And this causes a distraction, obviously. And so Bulldog and Owen start double teaming on Shamrock. And then Shamrock does ends up getting a cross um, body, a, a double cross body, technically, since he does it on both Owen and Bulldog to get, you know, back on his come up part or whatever. And it, when he does the crossbody, he really lands on Bulldog's head, so I'm surprised nothing bad went on there, but, you know, at this point in time, people would work injured and whatever, so um, it doesn't really matter, but it was just kind of a na nasty land. Um, but then uh, the Patriot and Bulldog start fighting, and uh, they end up doing a double clothesline, so they both get knocked out in the ring, and then at this point, Brett in starts walking uh, down to the ring, and Sergeant Slaughter ends up, you know, running out to try and stop him, like, halfway down the ramp. And Shamrock walks over and is staying at the bottom of the ramp, uh, motioning for Brett, you know, to come at him and, you know, like, challenging him. And at that point, Owen um, leaves his corner of the ring, grabs a chair, slides it in to give it to Bulldog. And then he runs around and starts um, to confront her. I don't know if he actually attacks him or if he's, like, just confronting uh, Shamrock, you know, to like protect him. So if he goes after Brett and so then back in the ring, Bulldog ends up like crawling over to grab the chair. But as he's like grabbing for it, the Patriot, um, gets in front of like stops Bulldog and ends up getting his, uh, full Nelson slam. I forget what they call it. I want to say it's like the uncle Sam or something or old glory. One of the, some patriotic name, but he gets his full net. So he puts him in a full Nelson and then just picks him up and slams him down on his back. Well, he does this on top of the chair and then slides the chair out and pins Bulldog for the win. Um, the next up we get a little video of Bret Hart, uh, like I assume like in his house or something, talking to the camera. And, you know, saying that he's doing all this stuff that he's doing is for his fans in Canada and around the world. Pretty much everywhere but the U.S. He's doing it, um, what his stuff, you know, being anti going against Americans and all this sort of stuff. Acting the way he is to be there for his fans. And while he's saying all this, there's like video of, or not while, but then it cuts to like clips of people that said like waiting at a some sort of airport in Canada, like a whole group of people just there to like run, to like catch Brett while he's either coming or going. And so of course, you know, there's saying all sorts of pro Brett stuff, saying that American and Americans are crap. And then they start singing the um, Canadian national anthem and stuff. So just a weird little um, propaganda video going on there. Uh, then we get Sean backstage uh, and he's talking to the guy that is his insurance policy. But the guy who's got his back turned to get the camera. So you can't like see who it is. But obviously if you like saw him you and could recognize what um, wrestler he was, you would know. But Sean notices that the camera is on them and so he starts yelling and runs at the camera and you know telling them to get out of there and stuff then we get a patriot interview backstage now and he's talking about um so this is after his match obviously and so he's saying you know that he's gonna be brett and uh, prove that he deserves to be in the wwf and why he's the best in the wwf and then of course as he's talking this whole time then brett comes running up and it starts attacking him with a steel chair and so that and then of course officials come to try and separate him and that ends that little segment. We then get our next match, which is kind of a um, big thing that goes on in this match. So we get Farouk, so of course of the Nation of Domination versus Chains of the DOA. So again, going on with this whole um, gang warfare storyline they're going for. So in the match, um, let's see, Chain does some uh, close does a clothesline on Farouk multiple times and ends like keeps like bouncing off the rope and clothesline him. And I can't remember if he doesn't go down. Uh, so he's you know like while uh, like kind of like rocking back like he's gonna fall down I believe is what happens but when he's doing it and he like actually starts to really fall back he ends up bumping into the ref so knocking the ref out even though it's just you know bumping into somebody and so the ref get knocks out and um so chain goes uh for the pin 
after I don't know if he does like a move or like you know if like a finisher type thing but he ends up going for the pin but obviously there's no referee there to make the count so um, Rocky Maivia comes running out of course he's in a shirt that looks almost like a referee shirt um, but he like gets in the ring and starts like shaking the ref trying to get him woke up and the ref starts stirring and then he walks over and grabs chains and does a side slam or the rock bottom but this was before it was called the rock bottom and so he does that and then gets out of the ring and starts motioning like motions for Farouk and saying pin him and so Farouk rolls over gets the pin on him because the refs you know wake down stuff and they get chains out of the ring and the rock is up in the ring and he's talking with Farouk and they walk over um, to the face start camera and they both throw up the nation of domination salute so it's just the fists up in the air and so this is signaling the rock joining the nation of domination so this is i said big because obviously this is where rocky joins um the nation which starts his big rise because he obviously starts getting his um personality that he was known for and start you know talking a lot more and this just really kicks off his career at this point um from there we then get probably after a commercial or something we then get cameraman in the back and he's walking up to uh like a locker room and in the room um it's all the nation there of course with their new member of rocky maivia and all the other members are standing there talking and they notice the camera and so Farouk runs over and starts pushing the camera guy out the door and slams the door in his face and so the camera guy like starts to walk away while as he's like turning around you see chains come running around a corner up the hallway and he's got something is it looked like a piece of like flimsy metal is what it looked like i have no clue why he had it all in his hands but it was like long and like bent like halfway or something I, like so i don't know it looked just like a weird piece of metal um but he came running up at the um, nation domination locker room and starts like banging on it trying to get in and so it looks like the nation members are holding it because the door like kind of opens a little but they like push it back and stuff and then the other um doa members come running up and they're all just trying to get into the door and so then a bunch of officials like sergeant slaughter referees um the other like backstage agents and stuff come up and stop them then we get something weird so there's supposed to be a match and so sable ends up coming out and they announce you know that she's gonna be the guest ring announcer so I assumed it was going to be like another light heavyweight match or something because that's what Sonny's been doing. And um, they're trying to get Sable to, you know, be more of a prominent female. And so I assumed it was going to be that, but it never got further than that. And so she's coming out, you know, Lawler and JR making comments about um, her profile of being increased. And so I assume they're um, making comments that she got like a boob job or something. And so that um, her breasts are bigger and everything. And so I assume that's what they were going for there. Um, but then the Patriot comes, ends up running out. So before, like I said, before anybody ever comes out for a match, but he comes running out and he, uh, challenged Brett for a match right then and there. Um, so Brett starts walking out. They start like fighting with each other. Well, then all the Hart Foundation comes running out and they start attacking the Patriot. And so it's a four on one attack. And because of that, Sergeant Slaughter and those same officials that were from the DOA thing all come running out and then up uh, stopping and, uh, getting the Patriot out of the ring away from the Nate, um, Bret Hart Foundation ending that segment. Then we get our Brackus vignette again of the week again. He never appears so it's just pointless. And then we get our main event for the night which is kind of a big match um, part that goes on here. Not the actual match itself but what goes on it. So does Shawn Michaels versus Mankind and so Vince keeps making a comment you know how they had this um, slammy winning match of the year at uh, my, Mind Games I believe the pay-per-view was last in 96. Um, so it's like a rematch of that match which was a pretty good match if you've never seen it I would recommend um, going to watch it. you get to see like early um, like hardcore type stuff for mankind and early out of the ring type things um, so this is a uh, kind of a match has a lot of stuff going on so I'll try and just like run through all the different things that happen um, so mankind um, when he first comes out he's carrying a trash can like a big plastic square plastic trash can and uh, so he throws it into the ring and uh, Sean ends up obviously getting the upper hand on him as soon as he enters the ring and he picks up the trash can as in Sean does and um, sticks it on top of mankind so over his head so you know he's standing there with trash can on himself and Sean uh, goes over and uh, climbs up to the top row but he's like backwards and so like he jumps and like kind of spins around like you do for like a crossbody but ends up like slamming his hands down onto the top of the trash can so kind of like a double axe handle and so mankind starts staggering around but then he gets the um, trash can off of him 
like knocks the actual can off but then he's wearing the trash bag so there's like a head hole and arm holes and stuff that he's sticking out of but from there he ends up getting the mandible claw onto Sean for a short period of time he just does it for like a few seconds or something from there they then fight to the outside of the ring so a lot of this they go in and out of the ring a lot so they first go to the outside where uh man they're fighting and mankind like does the thing where he picks up Sean and like drops him so his neck drops across the guard rail and then um Mankind goes to charge at Sean because Sean's like staggering in front of um to the side of the announce table and so Mankind like charges at him but Sean bends down and um you know ends up throwing Mankind back over him doing a backdrop onto the announcer table but the table doesn't break and so Mankind ends up like falling off because at this point they have just like the tables that they would normally use for a table match but it's like a smaller one or at least it doesn't seem as big but it doesn't break and so he kind of like rolls off onto the like chairs that the announcers sit on and then Sean goes up to the ring and he jumps off the ring doing an elbow drop on from the apron on to mankind where he's laying on like the chairs and stuff and then from there we end up getting back into the ring and Sean end up ends up doing another elbow drop onto mankind and then he's setting up to go for um, the sweet chin music but as he's going to kick mankind blocks it and gets the mandible claw on him again but he only holds it for a few seconds or he's holding it and they like fall out of the ring so they're back outside of the ring again and so sean you know breaks the mandible claw at this point and so he's like pushes mankind into the ring post to like help you know get him away and then he just starts slam like slamming but like pushing his head into um the ring posts you know knocking mankind loopy or whatever and stuff then sean does grabs him and then does a belly to back suplex on mankind onto the table commentary table but again it does not break and so then at this point triple h and china start walking um down the ramp to the ring and then it like goes to commercial comes back and they're in the ring again and uh sean ends up ripping mankind's mask off so he's like playing around with the mask while mankind's laying on the mat there's a point where mankind's like standing you know up against like Shawn michaels irish whips him into the ring post and then charges him but mankind moves and so sean slams his shoulder into the ring post then they fight some more and Shawn michaels ends up grabbing a sleeper hold onto mankind and holding him there for a while so mankind then gets the upper hand af after he breaks out of the sleeper hold and at this point once he's got the upper hand you see rick rude start walking out the ring and so he's obviously uh uh, Shawn Michaels insurance policy and you could tell it was him from their little backstage segment where you saw his back um and so he walks down um to the ringside uh, mankind ends up getting a double arm DDT which is the dirty deeds as Dean Ambrose does now and then from that like you know he gets what would be like a finishing move I think he does the sweet shin music but since he's not do love he doesn't call it because he kicks him in the shin and then grabs the ddt and does it but instead of getting the pin china gets up on the side of the ring and she, um, because of that the ref gets distracted so she's over there or so the ref's over there dealing with her and triple h grabs mankind's uh, leg as he bounces off the ropes and so ends up tripping him and grabbing onto him and he's like fighting with him like kind of like choking him against the ring and stuff because mankind obviously turns around to try and attack triple h and so triple h like grabs on him so they're fighting there with mankind um, like hanging out between the ropes and triple h on the floor so you then camera pans over to rick rude and he goes over grabs a um, steel chair walks over and starts a swing kind of looking like he's going for triple h but he hits um mankind directly on the head so like you know concussions there people uh, <laughs> so like really ch hard chair shot to the head and so he falls back and then he ends up you know staggering getting up and when he does Shawn michaels hits him with the sweet chin music and gets the pin off of that and so, you know, there's whole stuff of Rick Rude and China Triple H and everything. You're wondering what's going on. Well, then Undertaker's music starts going off and he um, comes walking down the ramp. And when he gets to the bottom of the ramp, you start hearing uh, um, Paul Bear's voice and he's up on the Titantron and he starts uh, yelling uh, that Kane is coming and the Undertaker will burn in hell for what he did. And so then there's like some sort of fire. I think it was like on the stage or something, not sure. But there's some sort of fire and the camera like just zooms into that. And that's the last thing we see of the this Raw. And so obviously with that last match there, we, we're getting the formation of DX with Rick Rude. Um, China Triple H coming out to help Sean. So that's the formation of DX. So that's why that was 
a big episode for Raw because we got obviously The Rock joining the Nation of Domination and the formation of DX. And now we're on to Nitro and this is like I said is episode 100 at least as how it's labeled on the WWE Network. But even though they celebrated their 100th episode last week with the big 3 hour episode. Um, but again, this is from August 11th, 1997, and this took place in Denver, Colorado. Um, so first off, I don't know exactly why they did this again like Raw. I don't know why they started the way they did, but it's of um, the giant backstage, and he walks up, and there's a whole bunch of security, and the head of security, Doug Dillinger, standing there, and he ends up, I, they said getting served, so like a um, protection order served, um, but I never saw them hand him anything, but I could have just missed it. And so that's how the show opened, and then we got our actual Nitro open, and then we get Michael Buffer, so he's back again doing the introduction, so again, let's get ready to the rumble, all that sort of stuff, and then it cuts to the Nitro Girls, which I'm so tired of the Nitro Girls and their horrible dancing. Maybe they get better over time, who knows, but they're just all horrible. And so then, this is of course the night after um, the Road Wild pay-per-view that we were talking about leading up to last week, and so we get discussion of that from commentary, and they mentioned, you know, that Hulk Hogan got the ended up getting the title back and winning it back whatever and so then um from there we then get our first segment of the night which is scott hall and kevin Nash come out to the ring and they're with six and they're saying how you know they're still the tag champions and they mention how um this commentary mentions that the steiners you know won the match but yet they won the match and had their hands raised but the titles didn't change so i assume there was like a disqualification or something going on with that i don't remember exactly and then scott hall mentions that um you know people were there just they're watching wcw or whatever just to see the nwo and that the si out si outsiders are the best tag team ever in wrestling so i don't really understand why he you know had to say that i mean obviously it is kind of true that people were there to see the nwo but i don't know why he <laughs> said it then and there i don't know if they're you know, if you mention about ratings or something, it would make sense. Um, but then we get a match of um, Hall and Nash, which is kind of not very normal for um, WCW or Nitro to have um, the Outsiders in the match. But it's them versus two people that they never said any names for, at least like announced or said, had their names on the screen or anything. But um, through commentary, I learned that their names were Bobby Starr and David Moore. So again, I have no clue who those guys are. Um, but Hall starts a match and he easily, quick, quickly, like takes care of both guys and like dispatches both of them. And then tags Kevin Nash in and Nash comes in and power bombs Bobby Starr and gets the pin. So obviously it's just an easy, quick little job match there. And so then <laughs> once they win, the Steiners and um, DiBiase come running out of the crowd and they attack the Outsiders and chase the Outsiders off. And they end up grabbing the titles and are um, standing in the ring tall holding them up. So, you know, showing that the titles should be there, but theirs, but they're not. We then go to our next match, which is Ming versus Rass. So kind of like a continuation of last week where barbarian fought wrath and then uh Ming came out to protect Barbarian from Wrath. So it's Ming versus Wrath and again with James Vanderberg. Um, so Ming a attacks uh, Wrath in the highway. So as Wrath's coming out, Ming runs up the highway because he came out first and starts attacking Wrath. Um, then they get fight all the way back to the ring and Wrath ends up going for um, his diving clothesline again off the top rope. Um, but Ming kicks the rope and Wrath ends up, you know, racking himself on the um, turnbuckle. Ming does a superplex on Wrath and then he... Uh, ends up finishing the match off by getting the Tongan death grip, which is just like a claw under the chin. So I assume it's supposed to be like cutting off circulation or air or something with grabbing under the chin. Um, but from because of um, him winning, uh, Mortis then ends up running out and then Barbarian follows him out and then they're all fighting in the ring. And Ming and Barbarian get on the outside and they corner um, James Vandenberg and like they're getting ready to attack of course the crowd's going wild as they're approaching like you know walking up on him but he ends up jumping over the railing and running out through the crowd next up then is a mean gene interview in the um on the ramp with the steiners and ted dibiase and the steiners talking about their regrouping and that they're going to be coming back stronger to uh, face the outsiders and then dibiase ends up question calling out questioning uh referee nick patrick um which of I think it happened already, but Nick Patrick was like the WCW ref, um, or sorry, NWO referee. So he was like on their payroll type thing doing their bidding, which I already thought he, or I thought from what I remember that he was pretty much 
most of the NWO, but I guess by now he's already done with that. Um, but he comes out saying that, or he starts explaining his actions, you know, saying why he made the decisions he did last night. But then he's like, but if I were you guys, I'd be the ones questioning uh, referee Randy Anderson, um, who was the ref during the Hulk and uh, Luger match. Because um, he's like, for because he allowed uh, NWO at ringside during the Hulk um, and Luger match, you know. This is because they ended up costing Luger the match and giving giving the title back to Hulk Hogan. So that segment ends, and then we move on to a match of Eddie Guerrero versus uh, Chris Jericho. Um, so just some cool moves that happen throughout the match. Uh, Chris Jericho does a monkey flip on Eddie, but Eddie lands on his feet. So this is obviously the uh, good kind of action we can see from cruiserweights like these guys, where a lot of the time that would happen in. You know, the guy would have hit it on his feet, but then fell over or fall back. or He wouldn't have stuck the landing, but Eddie was able to. Chris Jericho does a lion salt, but Eddie gets his knees up. Um, and then Jericho also later in the match ends up going for, um, starts to go for a lion tamer, but he ends up doing um, the big swing. And I think um, one of the commentary, commentators even said that it's the like lion swing because everything was like lion something because he's the um, lion heart Chris Jericho or whatever that he was known as. Um, but Eddie ends up getting the win by hitting a f his signature. Um, frog splash onto Jericho for the win. Then from there we go into another Nitro Girls um, dance routine and again Alex Wright comes out and interrupts um, doing the dancing so the Nitro Girls notice him and like get disgusted looks on their face and walk away and Mean Gene um, then comes out for an interview with Alex Wright on the ramp and Alex, they mention that you know Alex is still the champ that he retained in the match with Chris Jericho at Road Wild. And so it's pretty much just a repeat of last week um, that he starts speaking in German and Mean, uh, mean Gene starts saying, hey, this is America speaking English. And Alex Wright, he's like, hey, I'll do whatever I want. And I speak to the people that matter most to me first. So that's why he spoke German first, because he cares about them more. And then he said, you know, maybe I would be able to speak German if, he says that maybe he'd be able to speak German if the America... Uh, Americans weren't jealous of him and um, of his looks and um, his dancing and all sorts of stuff. And so then that, um, so he leaves and then we get into our next match, which is Dean Malenko versus Jeff Jarrett. Um, because Jeff for some ended up turning on Dean um, during Road Wild or something happened. And um, so now they're fighting against each other. Um, Marinko, Malenko starts, uh, first off, starts fighting with the ref because he's trying to get the, um, get to Jarrett as he's like, you know, walking up and trying to get into the ring um but so the ref keeps like trying to stop him to let Jarrett get in the ring but as he's doing that um Jarrett ends up being able to sneak up to try or starts like sneak up onto um Jarrett but Malenko ends up like catching him and you know getting the like drop on him or whatever you call it where he notices and um starts attacking Jarrett um so Malenko starts uh, really putting it to um Jeff Jarrett and so Jarrett tries to leave um but um he's like starting to you know walk back up towards the ramp well Mongo uh, Steve Mongo with Michael um comes walking out and he's gets up on the ramp to block Jarrett from leaving so Jarrett goes back to the ring and so Dean Malenko comes out after Jarrett and Jarrett ends up using Deborah as like a distraction like he uses her as a shield and then like ducks under her and attacks Malenko. Um, Malenko ends up doing a as they fight back in three, obviously. Malenko ends up doing a double underhook power bomb and then puts on the clover leaf to Jarrett. And as he's doing that, um, Eddie Guerrero comes running out and attacks Dean from behind. And then Mongo comes running back out and he starts to help Dean and starts fighting Jarrett. Uh, Mongo and Dean uh, clear the ring and then Dean ends up attacking Mongo at, at that point. Um, so uh, commentary has no clue what's going on, you know, because I believe Dean was a, was a part of the um, new four horsemen but ended up leaving along uh, you know and then Jarrett was trying to be in the four horsemen that's how he got with Deborah and everything and so then Jarrett left and then Dean left with him and now Jarrett turned on Dean so Dean you know it's they're acting like Dean's back with the four horsemen so that's why Mongo came back out but then he turned on Mongo so um, who knows what's going on with that whole thing. And then we go back up to the ramp um, and we get an interview with Mean Gene um, with Ric Flair and Kurt Henning. Flair confronts Henning, you know, saying that you saw him talking to Bischoff backstage and that he doesn't like Bischoff's and so he better watch it. And then uh, Mongo and Benoit end up walking out at some point behind him. And then Flair's, you know, saying that he wants to know if Henning is a horseman or not. And, you know, act after the actions, he thinks he is a part of the horseman and that he belongs with the group. And, uh, how they have a tag match tonight and Henning says you know that he will beat Macho Man tonight in his match and he'll definitely be doing it to show his loyalty to the, 
to the horseman, but he is not calling himself a horseman. So he's still playing, you know, coy with the whole being a part of the horseman and stuff. Then we get to move on to hour two. And so Nitro's back to two hours um, for a while, at least, like I said, I don't know how much longer. I know they go to three at some point and Lord help me when that happens, but um, we're back there too. And so we start off with uh, Scott, Scott Norton ver- um, with Eric Bischoff, who comes out on a motorcycle obviously because of the whole road wild with all this being at Sturgis and all the people on the Harleys and whatever and stuff. He, so he comes out on a motorcycle and Scott Norton's supposed to have a match against the giant. Um, but Bischoff is in the ring and he's talking he says, you know, I told you, you would pay Luger as in that he would not win the title. And then, um, Scott Hall, six buff Bagwell and Vincent all come walking out to the ring. And I'm like, what's going on? There's supposed to be a match. Um, but they all get in the ring and they start singing happy birthday to Hulk Hogan and, you know, saying that's why he's not, there tonight and um the him winning the title you know was like a birthday present stuff and so they're singing happy birthday to him in a horrible fashion but then giant ends up coming comes walking out on the ramp and and so bischoff starts talking about the giant you know saying how he's got a restraining order to stay um 50 feet away from eric but buff ends up he's like all of a sudden starts doing this weird walk and i had no clue what he was doing but he's um starts walking out he gets some out of the ring and starts walking up the ramp and stuff. And like I said, he's ro- walking real weird. And I had no clue what was going on, but he he's like walking and he stops and he gets a has a can of spray paint and he sprays a line on the ground and then um, marks 50 feet. So that's what he was counting the 50 feet out. And so um, the giant ends up then come um, walking out and you know he's walking towards that line and outrun Larry Zabisco and J.J. Dillon. And, you know they're trying to stop him so he doesn't get arrested because of the whole restraining order. And the giant ends up crossing the line, but security runs out to stop him and so giant you know mad and angry and just starts yelling he's like fine just arrest me and stuff so they start he like surrenders you know puts his hand up and they start walking up the ramp and they walk to the back and the last person of the whole group is larry zabisco and scott hall ends up like running up the entrance and starts walking up behind zabisco and he walks up and like taps on his shoulder and zabisco um turns around and he like puts his fist up like he's ready to fight and then scott hall throws the toothpick in his face and they just kind of stare each other down leading to you know carrying on their whole little feud uh, then next up we get another Nitro Girls segment so no one cares and then we get into our next match which is uh, Chris Benoit and Steve Mongo McMichaels against um, the Steiner brothers with Ted DiBiase um, Scott Steiner ends up at one point putting a STF so like John Cena's finishing move on Benoit and holding it but nothing ends up happening off of that ooh um, there's this one, one thing um, Rick Steiner ends up doing a belly to belly over like overhead belly to belly to his manga so obviously it's all belly to belly and he just picks him up and throws him up over his head well, when Mongo comes down, he lands weird and his knees end up like coming up and his one knee, right knee smacks him in the face and Mongo just like goes limp. Like, I'm pretty sure he got knocked out from that because he just lays there. And so Rick then gets down and pins him and Mongo's just like laying there the whole time knocked out. And so I'm surprised we didn't see like, you know, like an AM- or EMTs or anything come out to help him or if he just ended up coming back too and they end up like help someone helps carry him out or something um but then we get another me gene interview um in the ring this time with lex luger and so lex luger coming out saying you know that last week was the best night of his career and that at road wild you know the ref was just trying to do the best job that he could do and that he will face hogan again and will get the title back and that was pretty much all that he had to say um then we get our i believe last nitro girls segment of the night thankfully and then we get a match of buff bagwell and he comes out with vincent and he's going against ddp so diamond dallas page so at one point ddp goes for a power bomb so this whole thing was cool so ddp goes for a power bomb and so like when he lifts bagwell up uh, bagwell like drops his i don't know what he does but like he shoots like gets out of it so he drops down to his feet and like just stands directly in front of ddp and i just thought it was a cool maneuver and like you know for someone like buff i didn't expect him to be able to like do something like that so it's just kind of cool and interesting um but ddp ends up uh, throwing buff into vincent when vincent's standing up on the ring side and so that you know creates a little distraction type thing and then as he's bouncing back off uh ddp's evil able to get the diamond cutter off on buff getting the win for that match the next up we have a lee marshall road report and this time he's coming from birmingham alabama so obviously he just talks about stuff really to alabama and then we get a match of uh, mortis with james vandenberg again versus the ultimate dragon or ultimo dragon as you may know him. let's see mortis tries to go for a 
superplex or tries to superplex uh, Ultimo Dragon off the top rope, but um, Dragon ends up doing a counter with a face suplex which, or a front suplex, which was kind of interesting. So later in the match, uh, Mortis ends up going up for a flatliner, which is just a Simone drop off of the top rope, but um, Ultimo Dragon's end up is able to slide off his back and onto um, the mat and, you know, slams him down for a power bomb. For, oh, so slams Mortis off the top rope with a power bomb. And then from there, Dragon ends up putting on the Dragon Sleeper and getting the win. The next up, we get another Mean Gene interview in the ring, and this time with J.J. Dillon. And, you know, J.J.'s back to give another offer to Sting. And so Sting repels down from the ceiling and comes out to the ring. And this time, J.J. saying that he has a contract with a guaranteed match against uh, six of the NWO. And uh, Sting, you know, doesn't like that, so he grabs a contract and rips it up. And um, Sting starts to walk out of the ring, but the crowd starts chanting Hogan. And Sting stops and he starts pointing out to the crowd, you know, signaling that Hogan is who he wants, like, will come back for is a match with Hogan and stuff. So he leaves the ring and ends that segment. Um, we get a quick little commercial, um, NWO commercial for the new Madness shirt for Macho Man. And so it's a shirt and bandana double pack or what, I don't know what you call it, like a package deal. And they both just say Madness on them in black and white. And then we get our final match of the night, our main event, which is Macho Man, of course, with Miss Elizabeth. And he's taking on Kurt Henning as the main event. Um, so they start fighting outside the ring a lot. And Macho at one point uses um, Elizabeth as a shield, but um, she ends up ducking and Henning ends up clo clotheslining Macho Man. Like, obviously, he goes for a clothesline towards Elizabeth, but she ducks and en it ends up hitting Macho Man. Kurt Henning performs a um, natural, or I don't know what you call it, but it's what Charlotte does, the natural selection. Um, he ends up doing that on this, so I thought that's interesting that he was doing that, and that's uh, Charlotte's finishing move. Um, DDP ends up uh, running out to the ring and starts attacking Kurt Henning because they have their little feud going on. Macho and DDP then start fighting, so it's just a whole be confusing fish going out then Scott Hall ends up running out and starts attacking Diamond Dallas Page and then uh, Macho Man ends up uh, doing two elbows on Diamond Dallas Page before Luger ends up running out and clears the ring of all of the NWO members and so that is the end of R Nitro 100 um so overall the shows um weren't too bad I think think um raw was better this week because of the whole you know formation of the dx and rocky joining the nation of domination and nitro was just so so just a recap or follow-up to road wild and you know we didn't get to see hulk hogan or anything coming out to celebrate but overall they weren't that bad um, but again this was for august 11th 1997 part of the the monday night rewind going back 20 years to the monday night wars um so that's gonna be it for this podcast episode be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed leave it any comments you have down below and hit the red subscribe button to see more and we'll see you in the next one.